Greetings, fellow Tarnished. Understanding the stats and attributes of Elden Ring can look a little daunting at first glance, and even experienced Souls players might still have trouble figuring out what exactly is going on. Today, we'll try and clear up some of that confusion and help to dial in what you'd like to see in your character's build. We're going to be looking at the status page a lot in this video, so get your brain ready because there's going to be a lot of nerdy talk in this one. First, let's talk about the main attribute points of Elden Ring. After each level increase, you will affect your overall defenses, raising them higher, but certain attributes will raise specific defenses higher than others. Vigor is first. Putting points into Vigor will increase overall health while also boosting fire resistance and the immunity stat, which we'll talk about later. Mind will increase your mana or FP while also increasing focus. Endurance increases your stamina bar while also increasing your equipment load to help you wear and use heavier gear while still maintaining a decent roll speed. Generally, you don't want the heavy roll unless you don't plan on using it. Strength is required to wield heavier weapons while also increasing the damage done with those weapons in most cases. We'll talk about damage scaling here in a bit. Strength also increases physical defense the most. Dexterity has a lot of useful things tied to it. Not only does it boost damage with deck scaling weapons, it also reduces cast time of spells, softens fall damage, and makes it harder to get knocked off your horse. Intelligence is required for every sorcery in Elden Ring, and also increases the damage of those sorceries as well. Intelligence also gives you the most magic resistance. Faith is similar to intelligence, but instead of boosting sorceries, it boosts incantations. Anything faith-based will be increased with this stat, including pyromancies and lightning spells. Arcane is a bit of an oddball stat, but it increases item discovery while also affecting your holy defense and vitality. It also increases blood buildup on weapons that have arcane scaling as well. It's also needed for certain incantations and sorceries. By the way, if anything in this video helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, and share with others that could also use the help. Next, let's talk about the weapons themselves. Attributes required will tell you what stats you need to have to be able to use the weapon effectively. If you don't have the proper stats, then the damage will be significantly decreased, and if there's an Ash of War connected to the weapon, you won't be able to use it in most cases. The only unique case here is strength. Let's say a weapon needs 30 strength. That means you need 30 strength to wield the weapon in one hand. Imagine each hand having their own unique strength stat, in this case, if you have 20 strength, then you can two-hand the weapon and it'll be effective. Weapon scaling will increase damage based on the grade of the scaling. If you have a B in dexterity, then you'll get more damage out of your 25 dexterity points than a C grade. After upgrading a weapon enough times, you might see the grade increase, so be aware that at base level you may see a D scaling, but as you upgrade it, it should increase eventually. Passive effects like bleed buildup or frostbite are very important to check. If a weapon gives a passive effect, then it generally will give you more benefit than not having one. For example, the Samurai Katana has bleed effect on it passively, and you're also able to enchant or use weapon grease to gain another effect like fire. So now you have a fire katana with bleed on it. Frostbite, bleed, and poison are generally what you will see on most weapons. A very important aspect of this game is Ash of War skills that you are able to use to customize your weapons. This is a new aspect to the Souls games and can get very interesting once you start experimenting. The skills themselves are an entire video, but something I'd like to mention is once you obtain certain wet blades, based on what Ash of War you choose, you can decide to adjust the scaling to increase certain grades, or you can even add passive passive effects to your weapons as well. The last thing with the weapons we'll talk about is the critical stat. Critical is the multiplier that happens when you do a backstab or a front stab. The higher the number, the more your backstabs will do. By the way, did you know that there's an added damage if you attack an enemy without spotting you, which also includes spell damage as well? Let's jump into the defenses now. There are multiple types of physical damage in the game, strike, slash, and pierce, but they all tend to fall under the physical damage negation. The magical defenses are magic, fire, lightning, and holy. Sometimes you want to change gear or talismans in accordance to what you are fighting. If you are in Rhea Lucaria, for example, magic defense is going to help you out quite a bit. Now, the status effects are what you need to be careful of, because some of these will straight up kill you. Each status acts differently, but generally speaking, if this bar fills up all the way, then something bad will happen. If all of a sudden you took a huge chunk of damage and you're not sure where it came from, it's most likely because the bleed bar filled all the way up. So immunity affects your resistance to poison and scarlet rot. Robustness is your resistance to bleed buildup and frost buildup. Focus is your resistance to sleep and madness. And vitality will help you dealing with the death status effect. 
This dark bar here is death. If this fills up, you will instantly die, so be very careful with this. If you find talismans that help with these effects, I suggest using them in particularly nasty areas. Lastly, we'll talk about poise. Poise determines if you'll be staggered by an enemy's attack or not. Each enemy also has their own poise stat, which is why some enemies you can attack over and over to interrupt them from attacking themselves, and others will continue their attack animation through your normal attacks. Heavier weapons generally break through high poise enemies and cause them to stagger where a short sword or dagger wouldn't. There is a lot of depth to the stats in Elden Ring and we can go much deeper into the nuances of how each one works, but in all honesty, finding a weapon or two that has a moveset that makes you feel the most comfortable is generally what I look for first and foremost. There are also special weapons that have unique abilities on them that can completely change the way you play your game, so don't be afraid to try and build around these as well. If this video helped, make sure to like and subscribe and share to anybody else who could use the help. Until next time, Tarnished, have a good one.